special products are very simply just patterns that mathematicians have noticed um, in doing multiple iterations of distribution and factoring. Um, some of the basic factors that uh, we're going to look at are perfect squares and perfect cubes, and these are basically just time-saving tools rather than doing all of the algebra that goes into expanding this square or expanding this cube. If you recognize the pattern, you can quickly expand them, and you can also, in the reverse process, quickly factor them um, in recognizing this pattern. So that's what the pattern is. Where do these patterns come from? Well, let's look at one of the perfect cube patterns. A plus B cubed, this binomial cubed, should equal A cubed plus 3A squared times B plus 3A times B squared plus B cubed. So why is that? Well, first, if I have A plus B cubed, something that I've never seen or worked with before, it could be easier to first write it in terms of a factor of A plus B times a factor of A plus B squared. Now, A plus B squared, I'm using, in this case, the special product that I know that a plus b squared will be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now, again, you could just get that by foiling this out and using double or using double distribution to get that product as well. From here, I'm going to take my first term, my a term, and I'm going to distribute that across this trinomial. I'll end up with a cubed, which is the product of a times a squared, then a times 2ab, which give me 2a squared b, and a times b squared would give me ab squared. And that I'm going to add on then this value of b distributed through this trinomial, which will give me these three terms. And when I combine all of the like terms in this expression, I end up with that special product. So all these special products do for me is allow me to avoid pretty much all of this algebra and jump straight from a plus b cubed to this term. Now it happens enough throughout our algebra course and in future math courses that recognizing this pattern and being able to use it uh, is a very good time-saving tool. Now you can derive each of these four perfect cubes and perfect squares um, just by doing some algebra, but I would take some time to write them down and uh, memorize them. Now what these special products do is just basically speed up our expansion and factoring process. So how you would use them is as follows. This one is a perfect square and it's the difference formula. So I'm identifying which pattern that I'm using. I'll end up with my first term square minus two times the product of my two terms plus my second term square. So my first term in this case, A, is 2x and my second term in this case, B, is 4. So I should end up with my first term squared, which is 2x squared. Since it's a minus, it will be minus on my middle term, minus 2, which is that coefficient, times a. a in this case is the value 2x, so it will be 2x. b, and b in this case is 4, so times 4, plus my second term, b squared. So that will be, in this case, 4 squared. When I simplify that all out, remember exponents distributed across multiplication, so that's 2 squared or 4, x squared, minus 2 times 2, which is 4, times 4 is 16, and I have a factor of x as well, plus 4 squared is 16. So there's my term. Now, as you get better with this, you don't have to write out this intermediate step. It's actually not required, and I can just look, well, 2x squared is 4x squared. The product of these two terms, 2 and 4 is 8, double that is 16. That's where this middle coefficient is coming from. And since it's minus, it's a minus. And my last term squared, 4 squared would be 16. So you can jump right from this term to this term, the more familiar with the pattern you become. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? You can also use these perfect square patterns for factoring. Now notice, um, this looks like it fits the perfect square pattern, and the easiest way to check is to find, well, the square root of x is x, so x is, this is a perfect square. The square root of 9 is 3, so that's a perfect square. And now the middle term should be double the product of those two terms. Well, 3 times x is 3x, and double that is 6x, and 6x matches my middle term, so this is a perfect square. And then the sign is actually exactly the same as this value here. So this will be 3 plus x, or x plus 3 squared, is what it will factor to. So that's how you can use these perfect square patterns. If it fits this pattern, it will factor to a perfect square. And that's exactly what we've done here.
So in order to check for that, again, each of these corner values, the outside terms, have to be perfect squares. In this case, x squared was a perfect square of x, and 9 was a perfect square of 3. And if that middle term is 2 times the product of those two values you got, so 3 times x is 3x, and this is double that, it fits the perfect square pattern, then the sign that would go in that term is actually uh, the same as the sign of that middle term. So that's how you can use those uh, patterns here. These perfect cubes, we'll look at using them in class tomorrow. Um, for now, just be familiar with them, and then we'll see them in practice uh, soon. Another special product you should be familiar with is dots, which stands for a difference of two squares. It gets its name from this form of this special product, which is a squared minus b squared. That's a difference of two perfect square terms, and it factors to this. And again, this is derived from basically just using properties of distribution on my left-hand side to simplify it to my right-hand side. It can be used for expanding products and also for factoring products, an example of which is the following. If I have 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5, these are conjugates of each other. The conjugates result in that difference of two square situation. So that's a quick and easy way for identifying when to use this perfect square pattern. And what ends up happening is it's just um, the difference of the first term squared minus the second term squared. So in this case, it'll be 2x squared minus 5. 2x squared, again, that exponent of 2 distributes to both of those values, and I'll end up with 4x squared minus 25. Now, the sum and difference of cubes formulas are pretty much only ever used for factoring. The two formulas can be found right here in the upper right-hand corner, and you've actually seen these before in geometry, um, but I'm going to give you a tip in case you don't remember it or you missed it uh, to help you remember uh, how do these formulas work. Now, first, the coefficients. Whenever you see perfect cubes, whether it's a sum or a difference, the first term of the factored um, expression will be the cube root of each of those, will give me those values for the first term. So a cubed, the cube root of that would just be a, b cubed, the cube root of that would just be b. And then I have a squared and b squared, and then product of a, b, and it kind of has this symmetric distribution in the second term. So that helps you um, in remembering the symmetry here for determining those terms. That's great. And then the signs, if this is a positive, this sign in my factored form will be the same. The next sign will be opposite, and the last one is always positive. And an acronym to help you remember that is SOAP. Same, opposite, always positive. And the way it breaks out is the first term will be the same sign as my original cubes. The second uh, one will be an opposite sign, and the last one is always positive. So this is what it would be for plus. So what it would be for minus follows the exact same pattern. If this was, oops, excuse me, if this was a cubed minus b cubed, this would be the same sign, so it would also be a minus, it would match. The second one would be the opposite, which would be plus, and the last one is always positive, so it's always a plus sign. So that's a tip for helping you remember. Using it in an example, like factoring the following, the first thing I have to identify is what the cube root of these two terms will be. So I'm trying to factor this using this pattern. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to identify is what the cube root of this is. So that would be 3. So the cube root of 27 is 3. The cube root of x cubed is x, and the cube root of y cubed is y. So now I'm going to check if my second term is a perfect cube. Well, the cube root of 8 is 2, and the cube root of z to the 6th is z squared, because z squared times z squared times z squared would give me the z to the 6th. So now that's going to be, those cube root values will be my first term. So that's where my first term came from. My second term, that much longer one, will be this first value squared. So 3xy squared will give me 9x squared y squared. My middle term is just the product of this times this. So that's 3 times 2 would give me 6 x, y, and then I have a z squared. So that's this stuff times this stuff. And then my last term is my last one here squared. So that would give me 4z to the fourth. Now my signs <coughs> using that SOAP acronym are the same. So this will be plus, 
opposite, so this will be minus, and then always positive, so that'll be that. So this entire expression, when factored out, is equal to this. What turns out is that this second term will always be prime as long as there no, there's no GCF present. So if I look to double check, there's no greatest common factor present here, so this is a prime term, it's not going to factor any further. So this is my final factored form.